KK McCrary steps in as the leadoff hitter for Auburn, facing Sierra Harrison, who's coming off her best performance of the season in the midweek on Wednesday against Kansas City. What you're going to see from Sierra Harrison is a lot of balls up in the zone. She has a really hard rise ball that she throws, has a really good curve to get a strike on the outside corner. But really what gets her going is when she has that change up, keeps the hitters off balance. And that's what we expect we're going to see from her today. Sits mid-60s, a little bit different than Lauren Krings, who hits high 60s, even sometimes low 70s. But the thing that she does is places the ball so well, hits all four quadrants really well. Coach Anderson talked about that earlier this week. She has the ability to spot the ball so well that it keeps the hitters so far out balance. Julia Crenshaw with a sliding play in foul territory to start the day. Talk about keeping that momentum going from yesterday, starting at Julia Crenshaw. Had such a great offensive and defensive game yesterday, like Coach Anderson talked about. Now she comes out here and makes a Sports Center top 10 play to start the game. The game winning home run yesterday in the fifth in a 2 2 tie game. Had a pair of hits, also doubled earlier in the game yesterday. This is Michaela Packer, team's best batting average at 364 on the season. And that's just a little bit high and tight from Sierra Harrison, 1-0. Sierra Harrison's ability to not miss over the plate is what Coach Anderson talked about a ton when we interviewed her earlier this week. She's not pitching the ball down the middle. She's hitting those spots, and she's very, very reliable. Compared to last year as a freshman, she now understands the level that she has to pitch at and how competitive she has to be day in, day out. Can't take a pitch off, can't take an inning off, or that's when the other teams are going to hit her. Larissa Anderson really cutting her loose in her sophomore season this year has been the Saturday starter, the number two starter behind Lauren Krings. That's right there at the knees for a called strike, two and one now to Packer. Chattanooga, Tennessee native, second all time in stolen bases in, Aub in an Auburn career. When she gets on base, she is always a threat to take off. We saw that yesterday. She had a stolen base against the Mizzou Tigers. It got a little bit away from her, and she had the ability to move over to third base. And that's what she does for this Auburn team. Gets that, gets the ball moving, gets it rolling. The defense has got to think about what they have to do when she's on base because of her ability to steal. She didn't take off until about the sixth or seventh pitch in that at bat. And you could tell every pitch Mizzou was just holding their breath, waiting, wondering which pitch it was that she would take off. Cold strike three on the outside corner. Two quick outs for Sierra Harrison. Paints this outside corner with that curveball that we talked about earlier. She sneaks it a little bit farther outside to where Michaela Packer doesn't think it's a strike. Great job by Julia Crenshaw making that more of a strike than we expected. Got that looking strike three. So a pop out and a strikeout in the first seven pitches for Sierra Harrison to start her day and trying to make it a quick three up, three down inning. That's in there, 0-1 to Nelia Peralta, who was hitting in the five spot yesterday and has been all season long, but gets bumped up into the three hole today. Had one of just two hits yesterday for Auburn. Slices at foul right side, quickly 0-2. Coach Dean could not talk about Peralta more positively than he did when we interviewed him earlier. All he talked about is her athleticism. She plays shortstop for them. She's been in the system for a few years. So far, the numbers haven't been there like he expected, but he thinks that she's going to break out soon. Maybe last night was that breakout game for her to get a big hit against Lauren Krings and an RBI. Yeah, at that time, a game-tying RBI made it 2-2 two two in the fourth. Bouncer right back up the middle, off the glove of Harrison, fielded by Gallagher, and it goes one, two, three in the top of the first. Mizzou bats coming up next. Offense, who game in and game out this season, Brooke has been so good at delivering in big moments. We're going to see Jenna Laird at the top of the lineup, who is really the tone setter for this team. When she gets on base, everyone around her gets way more confident. Yesterday, Julia Crenshaw, what a breakout game for her. Coach Anderson said she needed that from her. Saw it yesterday. Expect these bats to be all over the first couple of pitches. It's Jenna Laird to start things off. 381 batting average on the season. Does such a great job at setting the tone, getting on base 
and allowing those power hitters behind her to bring her in. Extended her hit streak to five games yesterday with a base hit. And that slides outside. It's one and one. So Annabelle Weidra sits mid-60s. And Coach Mickey Dean told us she has to be able to work ahead to have success. Absolutely. And in order to keep these batters off balance, she has a really good rise ball, and that changeup is very lethal. If she's able to get that across for a strike today, these Missouri hitters are going to have to adjust to her. But she has the ability to throw anything that she wants when she gets ahead as well. And Coach Dean said that was kind of the story with all of his pitchers. If they get behind in at-bats, it could be a long day for them. But when they get ahead, when they throw first pitch strikes, they are usually really efficient. 2-1 to Laird, fouled straight back, and it's 2-2. Two and two. Which is unheard of to think about for this Auburn pitching staff. They are tops in the nation in walks to strikeout ratios. They've only had 18 walks on the season coming into this weekend compared to 126 strikeouts. We talk about them getting ahead, but obviously they must be doing something right if they're getting all of those strikeouts. Seven to one strikeout to walk ratio. Laird whips it into the gap in left center field and it's down. Make it six straight games with a hit. Takes no time for Jenna Laird to make it happen here in the bottom of the first. Jenna Laird does a great job keeping her hands inside of this ball. Weidra just leaves the ball a little bit too much over the plate. She gets on plane with it, hits it opposite field. This is a very good situation for the Missouri Tigers to start because a single for Jenna Laird can turn up being a double just by her speed on the base pass. Stole a base yesterday, has a team high nine now on the season, and Larissa Anderson said it's not just the fact that she steals bases, but defenses treat our offense so different when Laird is on base. And she said it's most specifically pitchers don't want to throw change-ups and they don't want to throw anything in the dirt. And because of that, Alex Honnell, Julia Crenshaw, Kara Daly in turn get a lot better pitches to hit. We're not going to take anything away from Alex Honnell, Julia Crenshaw, and Kara Daly because they are good in their own rights. But if you pitch anything in the dirt, Jenna Laird's going to take off and get into scoring position. Four of these really hot hitters behind her, especially Alex Honnell coming off the season she had this year and starting hot so far this, this year as well. Senior from West Des Moines, Iowa, was a second team All-American last year. Is hitting over 400 through the first 21 games this season. He did have her 12 game hit streak snapped yesterday, but still had a really productive day at the plate. Got on base a couple times, scored a couple runs, did what she needed to do. What can you ask for in that one and two hole position besides get on base? She reaches on an air, then scores on that Kara Daly home run, and then she gets on on a hit by pitch right after that, and she scores on the Julia Crenshaw home run. She's doing what she needs to do. She's just not hitting. She's hitting at two people instead of past them. And the one time she did get out yesterday was an absolute rocket out to center field to Michaela Packer. She just made a play on the run. Cuts right through it, Laird takes off, dives in in front. The shortstop brawl to drop the ball anyway, so make it 10 stolen bases on the year for Jenna Laird and a runner in scoring position with nobody out. This pitch is a little bit high up. Alex Honnold swinging right through it, but Jenna Laird with the speed that she has, she's going to get those stolen bases. It has to be a perfect throw, perfect tag, and we see the Peralta drop the ball over at second base for Jenna Laird to get that stolen base. Two and two to Honnold. Lifts it into the air, left field. McCrary on the run, bounces in front of her. Laird has to hold that third wedding to see if it dropped. Honnold's into second. Runners on second and third, and nobody out for the heart of the order coming up for Mizzou. McCrary over there in left field almost looked like she was in a pull position instead of actually being straight up like a normal left fielder. Alex Honnold just puts her hands out there, finds a hole in the defense. But just because Laird had to watch that thing drop, she was not able to get over, to get home. Alex Honnold then advanced over to the heck second base on that throw. What great hustle over there by Alex Honnold. Both base hits to start the day for Missouri have been in the opposite field, too, from a pair of lefties. Julia Crenshaw had the biggest swing of the bat yesterday. Game-winning three-run home run in the fifth to break a 2-2 tie. 
think they'd use one of those again right now if they could. With all the built-up energy and passion right now so far that you can feel in this stadium, if Julia Crenshaw gets a hold of one and get out of here, I cannot even imagine how this stadium would react to that. That's inside, bounces away from Lizenby. The catcher, Laird, scores, and Mizzou for the second straight day is on the board in the first inning. Lizenby, not a very good job of keeping that ball in front. Ball goes in the dirt. And with the speed of Jenna Laird, you know that she's going to score on something like that. Hano advanced to third base. A great start for the Missouri offense here. That, that looked like a ball that Lizenby should have been able to keep in front of her, but just kind of slow to turn the glove over. And we never know. She could have been crossed up something. It could have been, had to gone on the other side. We don't know what could have happened there. But from our perspective, we do think that Lizenby should have had that one. Shelby Elkins was the starting catcher yesterday in game one. It's Aubrey Lizenby here in game two. Two one is lifted in the air, shallow right field. The second baseman Rose Roach with the catch. First out. The third baseman, number 19. Missouri with already a run here in the bottom of the first, only one out. Still a runner on third for the cleanup hitter, Kara Daly, who also hit a home run yesterday. Auburn has to feel good about themselves getting that big out in Julia Crenshaw after the day that she had yesterday. But they can't take their foot off the gas now. They have Kara Daly, who has tremendous amount of pop up at the plate. She leaves anything over the heart of the plate, and that ball is going to get out of here. It was a first-inning home run yesterday as well. Made it a 2 nothing lead, one inning in. Rips it down the left field line, but it tails foul. Third home run of the season. Larissa Anderson said that she is a home run threat every single time she steps to the plate. Defenses know when she's up. O2 from Weidra. Slides just inside, one and two. Auburn faithful there thought they had a looking strikeout after working everything outside to Kara Daly. They bring this one in on her hands. Kara Daly with a great eye, making sure that she doesn't swing out of any any balls out of the strike zone. This is a big batter for Mickey Dean and, and Auburn trying to get an all important second out. Limit the damage here in the first. Poked into center field. Packer on the run, makes the catch, throws home, and it is in time. They got Honnold. Michaela Packer, a sniper from center field. What a throw from Michaela Packard. Her momentum was coming forward. She catches this ball even a little bit. Harrison in the top of the first, and now she comes out to work her second inning in the circle, facing middle of the order for Auburn. It's Anna Wollers, the first to the plate here for Auburn. Two-time All-Big East selection at DePaul in her only two years there. Now in year one with Auburn and has been one of the most productive bats for the Tigers this season. Out of the two transfers, she is most definitely the one that's going to get a little bit more base hits, have a higher batting average than, than Leck behind her. Leck's going to have more of that pop. She's going to be able to hit that thing hard, get it out of here. They did move down a little bit in the lineup just because of Peralta's ability to have such a great game yesterday, but still expect these two to lead the charge for this Auburn offense. Check swing from Woolers. She did not go around. It's two and one. Yeah, 342 batting average for Woolers is the second most. You mentioned the power of Amelia Leck. Five home runs, leads the team in the on-deck circle. And in fact, her first four hits this season were all home runs. Foul tips, two and two. 
Sierra Harrison coming back out into the circle. It's very important for her this inning to keep the momentum on their side. Your, your offense just came out. They had two big hits in a row. They get one run up on the board. You can feel the energy in this stadium just kind of staying stagnant. If she can keep that momentum on their side, limit the damage of the Auburn Tigers, and get their offense back into the dugout, it's going to be a great day. Cold strike three on an off speed right over the middle for Sierra Harrison. It's her second strikeout of the day. You talked on it earlier. This off speed is what keeps her so effective. She was able to get that one in there on the inside part. Woolers were timing everything up correctly, but when you throw in that off speed, it is so hard to adjust to it as a batter when you've seen everything hard come over the plate. So the second of those two transfers coming up, Amelia Leck, who spent her first two years in the Big Ten at Maryland, cuts right through its 0-1. And they were both so productive last year, Brooke, at each of their schools, DePaul and Maryland respectively. The numbers are even jumping higher this year. And that just tells you the talent level that they were at before they came into Auburn. They are now going to be facing some of the best pitchers and the best teams in the nation in the SEC. That's just how strong this conference is. But their numbers are, have only been increasing since then. That just tells you their ability to, one, hit the ball and make an instant impact for this Auburn lineup. One and two. Now, last year, Leck was a third team all Midwest region selection, hit 285, team leading 16 home runs. And not only the power that we talked about, five home runs this season, but she's hitting over 300 this year as well. So she's got that balance, Brooke, between the power and hitting for average, too. These were the numbers last year. Amelia Leck, 285, the 16 home runs. Anna Wohlers at 364. This year, they're both hitting above 300. The five bombs for Leck. Wohlers at 342, second best batting average on this team. They have been phenomenal in the middle of the order for Auburn this year. Leck way out in front of the off speed from Sierra Harrison. Back to back strikeouts to open up the second inning. Sierra Harrison bringing out the changeup in the most critical time. She pulled the string on that one. That one was even slower than her changeup before to Woolers. She's doing such a great job pounding that zone, making sure that she doesn't leave anything over the heart of the plate. And with that changeup, and the Auburn batters have no idea when it's coming, it's going to be so hard for them to try and get on time with the hard stuff. Larissa Anderson said she already won't overpower you, right? She sits in the mid-60s. Sometimes she can get to the high 60s. But then when you take off as much speed as she does on that changeup, she has batters fooled all the time. There must be something going on with this Missouri pitching staff. Yesterday, Lauren Krings with that nasty changeup. We talk about that all the time. But then you have a second starter who has the same type of pitches in that rise ball and that curveball. But to have the ability to have that changeup and throw it in any count that you have, Loris Anderson must be teaching something down there <laughs> with those pitchers to have such great change-ups. Yeah, Krings went just two hits, nine strikeouts, complete game in the win yesterday. That's in there for the first strike of the at-bat to Isis Trezvik, two and one. So 0 for 3 last night, but not many players had a hit against Lauren Krings. She was locked down in the circle. Two balls, two strikes. You can tell the Missouri faithful did not like that pitch call. They thought that was supposed to be a strike. My apologies. It, I guess it, it was a it strike. Was, it was a very delayed signal. I was with you. I thought it was called a ball at first, but end up being a strike. So used to those umpires trying to go right away <laughs> with the strike, and sometimes when it takes a little bit later. Shot right back up the middle for Isis Trezvik. That's the first base hit and first base runner of the day for Auburn. We were talking about that off-speed pitch, but Trezvik does such a good job keeping her weight back on this, shooting it right back up the middle, getting that first hit for the Auburn Tigers. It's two-out single from Isis Trezvik. 
Second baseman Rose Roach at the plate, trying to start a two-out rally. Whiffs right through the first one, 0-1. Oh we talk about speed all the time with Michaela Packard. Tresvik is not one that you can sleep on as well, too. Coach Mickey Dean earlier said, yes, Michaela Packard has all the numbers. She gets all the all the accolades. But Tresvik over at first base, she does the same thing for this defense. They got to stay on their toes when she's on first base. Not quite the volume that Packer has, but five stolen bases this season, second most on this Auburn team behind Packer. One one from Harrison. Check swing, fouled off. Ball and two strikes, and after the two out single, Sierra Harrison has a chance to get out of this second inning. Two balls and two strikes. Two outs here in the second. Tresvik on first. Auburn down one nothing after a Missouri first inning run. Bouncing ball over to short. Laird knocked it down with a backhand to keep it in front. But it's back to back base hits for Auburn. That was one of those plays that General Laird was already playing up the middle to try and cover that steal. And with a with a ball so far in that in the hole, I don't think she would have had a chance at first or second base for that. Kara Daly has to try and cut that off, but that ball was perfectly placed by Roach. I don't think General Laird would have had a play regardless. If Jenna Laird can't make a play at short, I don't know that anybody can. You're talking about a gold glove winner at short two years ago, three-time All-SEC selection. And as good as she is at the plate, Brooke, I think she's more valuable at short. Coach Anderson talks about it all the time, how how great of leadership she has out on out at shortstop. First pitch swinging for Aubrey Lizenby, the catcher, and she pops out to Kara Daly at third. Mizzou gets out of some. Tennessee, the number one seed, first SEC regular season championship for the Vols in 16 years as Maddie Gallagher leads off this inning for Mizzou. And what a year she's had this year, Brooke. Her production from last year to this year has taken such a jump forward. She played so well defensively. That's a lot of the times why she stayed in the lineup, was able to get on base very well. Started in the nine hole to start the year, now in the five hole just because of her ability to do exactly what just happened there. Hit the ball really hard, even though it was a, even though it was a fly out to left field. But so far, her numbers are indicating such a big jump from last year to this year. Year two under Jeff, under hitting coach Jeff Cottrell. Yeah, last year, only 14 RBIs, 12 this year. We're not even halfway through the season. She's already more than doubled the amount of doubles she's had. So the pop in the bat, it's not just that the batting average has jumped, but also the pop to get extra base hits, too. I think we've seen that along the whole Missouri lineup so far, especially this batter up to bat two, Katie Chester. She's had such a great increase from last year. She has only gotten better as time gotten, has gone on. And again, that, that attributes to Jeff Cottrell. It's the second year under the system with him. He has figured out what are the ins and outs for these batters. And that's what made them so successful is the buy-in from last year to this year. Jumped more than 100 points in her batting average. Hit just 190 last year. She's north of 300 this year. And Larissa Anderson said a lot of that has to do with she knows she has a designated role this year. She played a lot last year. She started a lot. But she knows day in and day out she's going to be in the lineup. And that's been the difference for her this year. She pops that one foul and out of play. One and two. The confidence going on in this Missouri lineup is something that we never saw last year. Yeah. No one ever stepped in the box and you're like, oh, here she comes again, obviously, besides Alex Honnold with the year that she had. But their lineup, one through nine, is so dangerous. You have to pitch so carefully to one and two, just like you do eight and nine. That's how good they have been this year. And it's, it's amazing to see the jump from last year to this year.
Did, do you ever have a moment like that, Brooke? I, and I know it wouldn't be exactly the same because you stepped in as a freshman and started almost every game throughout your career, but did you have a moment of realization where it was, okay, even if I go through a slump, if I have a few games in a row where I don't have hits, I know I'm going to be in the lineup every day? So speaking of that, when I was a freshman, I actually started my career. Oh, that got down. The sun got in the eyes of Trezvic and Chester's into second. of losing it in the sun. Absolutely, and it's one of those things you can see right now, Packer going over there, handing over the sunglasses. You gotta identify that before the game when you're in right field or at second base at this, at this time. The sun is going to be bad. You have to take those fly balls. You gotta wear those sunglasses. It's one of those things that she was not prepared when she went out there with those sunglasses, and now she does knowing that those balls are gonna be pretty bad out there. Guess you won't allow the mistake to happen twice. So unfortunately for Weidra, that goes down as a hit and not an error because never touched the glove of Trezvic. Madison Walker in on the hands roller to second, pops through the legs of Roach. And two runners aboard here in the second inning. Weidra doing her job, getting those outs for the defense. Defense has not had her back so far. She hasn't done a bad job. But again, there's one of those things that these Auburn Tigers are not trying to get those outs, attack those balls. You can see that ball had a little bit of a funky spin, but Roach should have went and got it a little bit more, get that out over there at first base. Batting averages are up on base percentage, power numbers. Everybody is doing a great job. Daniel Blackston, who's the pinch runner at first base. Square down to butt for Shantice Eight. Phillips, and it's just foul. With the pinch runners just put in, that is such a smart move by Larissa Anderson. You also have another pinch runner over at third base in Claire Cahalen. We saw her speed last night when she got the opportunity to hit, to pinch hit in the game. She has so much speed on third base, trying to get a squeeze down with the bottom part of your lineup, take that momentum out of Auburn sale a little bit more. What a great call by Larissa Anderson, just wasn't able to execute. Shantice Phillips drives it deep right center field, and it's gone! Second home run of the year for Phillips. This one a three-run shot, and Missouri has opened it up in the bottom of the second. Why get that squeeze, squeeze down when you can do exactly what Shantees Phillips did? It's almost like she wanted to do that on purpose. No, Coach, I'm going to foul this one off so I can hit it out of the park opposite field. What an at-bat for Shantees Phillips. That was a low pitch, too. Went down and got it, drived it opposite field, and gave what this crowd wanted. They've been waiting to explode all day long. They were able to do it just then. That's deja vu, Brooke, because the same thing happened last night on Julia Crenshaw's home run. She squared around a bunt, fouled it off, and then a couple pitches later swung and hit a three-run home run to give Missouri the lead. Do you think that's something that the Tigers might be working on on practice? <laughs> you know, bring the defense in a little bit, think that they're going to bunt, and then knock it over their heads. I know that's not something that you can actually work on, but <laughs> twice in a row in, in one weekend is pretty impressive. Yeah, I'm sure that's exactly what a coach wants to hear. Let's work on not getting the bunt down so we can swing away. They love hearing that, I'm sure. This is Kaylee Langer had a pair of base hits last night in the nine hole, up to 355 batting average, but chases that one outside. One and two. When you have damage at the bottom of the lineup like Missouri does, you just had a Shantice Phillips home run. Last night she was one for three. Kaylee Langer had two base hits last night. They're able to trans they're able to translate that over to the top of the lineup. And then you have Jenna Laird. And Kaylee Langer who pulls one down the line and it rolls all the way to the wall. 
Kaylee Langer with a one-out double to turn the order over to the top. The damage is done again by the bottom half of the lineup. Shantice Phillips, yeah, I can hit a home run. Kaylee Langer comes right back after that. You know what? I got something for myself, too. Hits this down the left field line again. Such a low pitch, goes down and gets it. But she does what she needs to do in this bottom half of the lineup, bringing it back over to Jenna Laird and Alex Honnold. Third hit of the last two days for Kaylee Langer in the nine hole. And that draws a pitching change. Day is done for Annabelle Weidra. She goes one and a third, gives up four runs. New pitcher and numbers after this. Another route with Weidra. But Shelby Lowe is a very crafty lefty. We saw it her freshman year. She had a dominant season. Hasn't had the same amount of numbers, but she has a really good curve, really good rise, and an awesome changeup that, that keeps these batters off balance. When she's on, she is nearly unhittable, but again, it's her consistency that's her biggest issue about why she might be pitching and why she might not be pitching that day. Shelby Lowe was a second team all SEC selection as a true freshman a few years back, was injured her sophomore year, pitched through it, but the last couple of years hasn't put up the numbers that she had as a freshman and trying to get back to it as a senior this year. Jenna Laird fouls that one off, it's 0-2. I mean, she was one of 15 finalists for National Freshman of the Year a few years back. Had some great stuff. Had a 148 ERA, won 13 games, had 179 strikeouts. Numbers haven't been anywhere near those in the last couple of years. So there it slaps it foul, stays 0 and 2. But it offers a different view from the other pitchers coming from the left-handed side. And when you have a lefty pitcher, she's not, she's, she person is not going to overpower you with her speed. It's going to be her movement pitches coming from the other side that is going to hopefully get these Missouri batters off balance. Laird goes around, so it's a strikeout, and Shelby Lowe comes into the game right away and gets an important out. We talked about that changeup before. This is exactly what Shelby Lowe comes back with, low in the dirt. Jenna Laird not able to hold up on that pitch when it's an 0-2. That's a great start for Shelby Lowe, getting that big out of Jenna Laird. Lefty on lefty matchup here with Alex Honnold at the plate. He takes a first pitch strike. No hits yesterday for Honnold to snap a 12-game hit streak, but right away in the first inning comes through with a double today. Smashed right back up the middle from Alex Honnold for her second hit of the day. Runner comes around to score, and it's 5-0 Mizzou in the second. Just when you think you are almost out of the woods, you got to come back and face Alex Honnold, the reigning All-American, comes up clutch for this Missouri team against the new pitcher. Hits this one right back up the middle. Another low pitch again. She does such a good job at getting her hands to the ball. That's what makes her so successful. She gets another RBI and another base hit on the day. Ninth multi-hit game of the season for Alex Honnold. A double in the first, a single that plates a run here in the second. 5-0 Missouri lead. They've got a chance to already win the series today after winning 5-2 yesterday in game one. Julia Crenshaw takes outside. This is just not something we're used to coming from the Auburn pitchers. They are so dominant so far this year with the amount of strikeouts that they have. We're not used to them getting hit this hard. So how are they going to respond back from that? How is Maddie Penta going to respond from the domination of the Mizzou offense from yesterday? That's just one thing that we're going to have to keep, a, keep an eye out for to see if these batters can adjust to the Missouri hitters just like the Missouri hitters have done for the pitchers. And they're also not used to a whole lot of contact in general. I mean, you're talking about Maddie Penta, who's third in the country in strikeouts this season, only had four yesterday. 
one and a half times through the Missouri order today, just one strikeout for this Auburn staff. Not something we're used to, that's for sure. But again, now that we have a new pitcher coming, how is Shelby Lowe going to attack these hitters after Weezer was not able to get even out of the second inning? That's how effective this lineup has been. Alex Honnold is in there safely for her fifth steal of the season. And she's in a scoring position now for Julia Crenshaw. Two two from low. Lifted in the air, right side, tailing towards foul territory, and it's have been. But again, Sierra Harrison has been dealing so far this year. A complete game allowed just two hits in the win Wednesday. And the Mizzou ace Lauren Krings followed it up with a very similar performance last night in game one against Auburn. Two hits, nine strikeouts. We talk about Sierra Harrison, who has been dealing so far this year. She has already thrown a no-hitter earlier this year yeah. as well, too. Now, it was a combined no-hitter. <laughs> so Mizzou only ended up winning 1-0, to zero, but Sierra Harrison has made such big strides from last year to this year, not only from her confidence standpoint, but you can see every single pitch she is locked in to where she wants to pitch it to, and that is why she's their number two starter behind Lauren Krings this year. Well, Larissa Anderson said last year as a true freshman, we wanted to protect her a little bit. We didn't really throw her out in the fire. This year, she said, though, there's no restraints on her. We are letting her go out there and letting her loose. Which is something in the SEC that these freshmen have to figure out their first year is their confidence when they're going to come in, especially in the pitchers. But last year, Sierra Harrison had that from Coach Anderson, and she didn't quite put her in those big games like you expect them to. But this year, it is all, all hands on deck, and she's going to do everything that she can to stay in this lineup. Four strikeouts the first time through the order now for Sierra Harrison as that was the nine-hole hitter, Mariah Penta. So top of the order now, KK McCrary popped out her first time up. That skips in there, 1-0. And I think Sierra Harrison would probably tell you that she benefited from being held back a little bit last year and not really being fully let loose until this year. It is such a change from high school and even travel ball into the into the college ranks, especially in the SEC. It is the hardest conference in the nation, but Sierra Harrison benefited from that. She pitched mainly midweek games. She came in, in relief a lot of the times during SEC series. Didn't pitch a ton, but also at the same time, she was able to work on things. She was able to work on pitches to make sure that they're more crisp and more fluid, and because of that, this year she has been dealing, and she's able to hit these spots so well and effective. That's what's keeping her ha having the success that she normally has. Well, KK McCrary gets a hold of one to right center field, and it clangs off the wall. Honnold fires back in. It's a stand-up double for McCrary. Just when we're talking about her dealing, she leaves one over the plate to KK McCrary, the leadoff. And this is why she's in that position to get on base. She does such a good job with this outside pitch, taking it the way that it needs to be. She's not trying to pull it, just trying to st stay on plane with the velocity that's coming in. It goes out even harder. Hits this really hard off the wall. We thought for a chance maybe Alex Honnold would have a play. Bobbles it out there just a little bit. Great job by, McCr by McCrary, especially after that big inning that Mizzou just had of getting that momentum back on their side. Yeah, four runs second inning for Mizzou, including a three-run home run from Shantese Phillips, and that one sprays just foul from Michaela Packard. The fact of the matter is you're not getting five runs back on one swing, Brooke, but over the course of the middle and the later innings, the little bit by little bit that you can chip away is crucial. If you can get one or two runs here in the third, makes it very different than being down 5 nothing. That's what happened yesterday in the game is Mizzou went up super hot in the first inning, got those two runs, but Auburn slowly started working their way back, ended up tying the game in the fifth inning. And this is the part of the lineup that they want to do it with, is the, is the top of their lineup, the one with the most experience, the one with the best numbers. And it's going to start here. It started with McCrary, and now it's got to be Packer, who has to find a way to put good at-bats together to try, and to, get, to try and get to Sierra Harrison. Team best 353 batting average for Michaela Packer. 
fouls it straight back, one and two. Started the year in the six hole, but Mickey Dean said we wanted to move her up in the order, and he said we waited a little bit and finally felt it was time last week. They put her from six up to two, and she has been thriving towards the top of the order. Two and two. Lifted in the air to right field. Kaylee Langer's there to camp underneath it for the second out. And the throw got by Daly, so runner gets to advance from second to third. It's really hard to see what happened here on this play because Kaylee Langer does a good job staying behind the ball, has a really good throw over to third base. But on that long hop, it just seemed like Kara Daly seemed to take her eye off of it at the last moment, checking up at the runner. And when that happened, when that happened, that ball got past her. Sierra Harrison wasn't in the best position for that backup in order for McCrary to get over to third base. Let's see if Auburn can make him pay for that. You said it. Watch Kara Daly's eyes pop up right before the ball gets there, right now. Eyes pop up. Ball gets by her. Allows the runner to advance 60 feet. Slow chopper over towards second, played by Gallagher, and the air does not hurt him. Five years are done for all of these athletes. They got to find a job that they enjoy after life as well, too. Because unfortunately, the pro softball is just not something that's taken off very much so far. There is works in the process to get there, but these athletes are trying to find things that they enjoy doing. And to see Shelby Lowe excel in the classroom as well is something that is so awesome to see. 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. every day in the classroom, then immediately leaves her teaching job, goes to practice every night. It is a full day of work for Shelby Lowe, who's really close to getting her teacher's license. It's her first full inning of work. Her second inning of work in relief came in with one out in the second inning. Was able to shut the door, didn't allow any more damage to Missouri, who scored four runs in that second inning. All five runs went to the starter, Annabelle Weidra. This is Kara Daly, the cleanup hitter for Missouri. Homered yesterday. She's 0 for 1 today with a fly out to center field. Three one from low. Chopped right back to her, fields it for the first out. She can pitch, she can teach, she can field ground balls. What can't Shelby Lowe do? At this point, I don't think we have any proof that says that she can't do anything. Comes back after pitching three balls in a row, gets a strike, and then gets the weak little ground out right to her. She didn't even need the defense behind her. She was able to field that by herself. She's facing the part of the order that really blew up in the second inning to score those four runs. It was Maddie Gallagher who led off the inning. Now she lined out to left field, but then four straight batters after that all reach base and all four of them scored. one 0 dips low and inside, it's 2-0. And she's at her best, Brooke, when she gets ahead of batters, when she throws first pitch strikes. Didn't get ahead of Daly, and now behind 2-0 on Gallagher as well. It's one of those things that with this Missouri lineup, they're not going to chase anything out of the zone. That's another philosophy that hitting coach Jeff Cottrell talks about. Looping ball down the left field line, and it tails out of play. 
Jeff Cottrell talks about making sure that they get good pitches in the zone that they can drive. Maddie Gallagher is a prime example of that. She never chases anything out of the zone. Coach Anderson talked about earlier, she probably has the best eye on the team in front of Jenna Laird, Alex Honnold, Julia Crenshaw, all of those batters. Maddie Gallagher has such great discipline up at the plate, which makes her so successful. She did not go on the check swing, makes it three and one. It, she's hitting almost 350 on the season, so she's got the batting average, but also team leading 14 walks. She's got an on-base percentage of over 500, does Maddie Gallagher. Softly hit in on the hands. Second baseman Roach zips it over to first in time for the second out. It's been a long, winding career for Shelby Lowe. She was a second-team All-SEC selection as a freshman, was a finalist for Freshman of the Year, had a sub-2 ERA, was striking out a ton of hitters. She had an amazing freshman season a few years back. Squared around a bunt. And that's one of the things about the SEC that makes it so hard year after year after year is you can come in, there's no film on you, there's no scouting report, and you can just pitch and do what you need to do. And that's what Shelby Lowe did, and she was very successful. But then as teams started to figure out that film on her, figure out her tendencies, that's when she started to get hit a little bit more. She has done better throughout her career, making sure that she adjusts to what these hitters are doing to her. But that freshman year was by far, numbers-wise, her best year. But she's starting to figure out a little bit more as she's gotten older and matured a little bit as well. Yeah, pitched her entire sophomore season through an injury. So numbers are sophomore and junior seasons down a little bit. Senior year, her numbers the best that they've been since her freshman year. Claire Cahalen whips that one foul. First at bat of the weekend, too, for Claire Cahalen, who came in as a pinch runner in the second inning. Chops it over towards second. Underhand flip from Roach, and it's a quick one, two, three inning. Top of the fourth, we go in Columbia. Missouri up 5 0 on Auburn, and Kylie is down on the field now with Mickey Dean. So, Coach, what was your thought process behind starting Annabelle Weidro, and what were you seeing from her? Well, we were trying to keep the ball down, of course, and uh, work it in and out. And, um, you know, um, she gave up the one big hit, and, 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 and that, that kind of hurt. Uh, our defense didn't quite pick us up there, and so uh, it ended up being a, a multi-run home run, and that's that's the things you try and stay away from. And now we now we're in a position we got to fight back, we got to battle. We, you know we can't worry about the end of the run, uh, end of the game and what the score is going to be right now. We got to make sure we're battling pitch by pitch so that we can get back into the game. All right, thank you, Coach. War Eagle. Back to you, Noah. All right, thanks, Coach. Thanks, Kylie. Coach Dean's team down 5 nothing, and kind of let that second inning spiral away from his, exactly what he was talking about there with Kylie trying to get back in at one pitch at a time now. You could just see the expression on his face that he was not very impressed so far with his team, especially the, the defensive side because they've been so solid this year. They're not, even though it only counted as one error, they're not used to making those two even though one in the book did not count and counted as a hit, but he's expecting his defense to pick up his pitchers to have behind him. And Weijer did a good job. They could have been out of that inning if her defense behind her would have made that play. So uh, the Auburn Tigers got to got to find a way to bounce back after those mental errors. Instead, the one official error and the second just kind of a miscue out in right field led to a four-run second inning. It's Anna Wollers at the plate for Auburn to start this fourth inning. She's down 0-2 against Sierra Harrison, who's thrown three shutout innings, has only given up three hits. High and outside.
A little bit high again to Woolers. Is behind 0-2, has battled back to make it 2-2 two two against Harrison. Four strikeouts through three plus innings for Sierra Harrison. Has been locked in, has not allowed many base runners. Off speed on the two, two is a cold strike three. Strikeout number five for Sierra Harrison. Comes back with that off speed again. She's already gotten two batters on it and she gets him again. Woolers just could not pull the trigger on that off speed. A great pitch by Sierra Harrison. She has everything working for her, but especially the off speed stuff. And again, that is these Mizzou's pitchers, bread and butter. When they have that on, they are almost untouchable if they don't throw it over the heart of the plate, which Sierra Harrison has not done today. That was a half sword of a swing from Amelia Leck, 0-1. You don't see a lot of these Auburn hitters feel very comfortable in the batter's box against Sierra Harrison today. Maybe it's because of that changeup. Maybe it's because she has so much movement on her pitches. But just like we saw there, there was a little bit of a sword swing. She might have been a little indecisive about what type of pitch she was looking for. Lauren Krings was phenomenal yesterday. Two hits, nine strikeouts in the complete game win, but the batters look even a little more confused today with that changeup that Sierra Harrison has. It is Sierra Harrison's second year in the league compared to Lauren Krings, who has had four years under her belt. It might be because of that, and they've seen it before, but there's not much on Sierra Harrison from last year. And this year, she's been dominant against the teams that she has been going against. And you can see it again here against an SEC foe. Already five strikeouts. She's coming off a career high 10 on Wednesday against Kansas City. One, two from Harrison. Swing and a miss from Leck. Back-to-back -back strikeouts to start the inning for Sierra Harrison. We've been talking about her off speed for that for that strikeout pitch, but this time it was that hard curveball on the outside half. Leck just did not look comfortable at all that at bat. This time she swings through that outside pitch. Another great pitch from Sierra Harrison to get another strikeout. It felt like a large portion of last year. If the offense was really good, Brooke, then the pitching would struggle and vice versa. If the pitching was great, deep offense wasn't quite there. But what we've seen all season long, and especially these first two days here against Auburn, hitting's been there, offense has delivered, pitching's been phenomenal too. Absolutely, and on top of that, their defense has been amazing too. That is a huge philosophy for Coach Larissa Anderson, is you gotta have defense to win championships. Yeah, you can hit one home run, two home runs, your pitcher can pitch lights out, but they can't strike everyone out. You gotta make some plays on defense. And the Mizzou philosophy, they will never be beat on a defensive air. And that's what I think makes them such a complete team, is they have all three of those factors working this year. It's not just good pitching. It's not just good hitting. It's not just good defense. They all work together, and that's made them so successful. Got her swinging again. One, two, three inning for Sierra Harrison as she strikes out. Welcome back to Columbia, Missouri. I'm here with Coach Larissa Anderson. Coach, what's working so well for Sierra Harrison right now? She's moving the ball both sides of the plate. She's keeping them off balance with that change up. Um, she's hitting some key locations. And then Shantice fouls off a butt and then hits a home run. Is that is that a sign you have? or uh, Not in particular, but I'll definitely take the home run over the, the missed squeeze play for sure. Well, thank you, Coach. M-I-Z. Back up to you, Noah. Thanks, Kylie. Offense and defense working for Larissa Anderson's team right now in a 5-0 lead, trying to take game two after winning 5-2 yesterday over Auburn in game one. Leading off to the Tigers, number two, the first baseman, Madison Lawrence. So bottom of the order for Mizzou up here in the bottom of the fourth. Madison Walker, the true freshman, reached on an air came around to score one of four runs for Missouri back in the second inning. And somebody that they think is going to be such a huge bat in the lineup the next few years, the first baseman of the future, but as a true freshman this year, kind of going through some growing pains like you typically expect freshmen to have. Absolutely. And if you were a freshman in the SEC, this is what's going to happen to you, is you're going to swing at balls out of the zone like we just saw. 
you're going to see faster. You're going to see change. No one really knows anything about you. But again, taking that big deep breath, realizing, yeah, you've made it here. You made it to the SEC. You don't have to do too much. She's still trying to realize that and still trying to grow a little bit. But when she does, the Mizzou coaches believe she's going to have a very bright future. She was way ahead of a couple off-speed pitches there from Shelby Lowe for the first strikeout of the day. Number 28, Sean G. Shantice Phillips has the biggest swing of the day today. Three run home run back in the second and she offers at the first pitch, slicing that one out of play. This was what it was back in the second inning, Brooke. This outside pitch, she gets on plane with it, smokes this thing out to the right center gap. Claire Cahala knew it at third base and you can see the Missouri dugout going absolutely crazy for her. It's so good to see her get back on track with her hitting. It, that's a great point because she finished last year 0 for her last 26, Brooke. She was the starting left fielder, ended up getting benched about halfway through April, didn't play the rest of the season, but kind of had a new lease on life this year, and she has been great, and she's been in the lineup more times than not this year. She got the start again earlier this year, but it has gone through some growing pains, which she's had done a really nice job of recent, making sure she finds ways to get on base, try and help turn that lineup over. She grounds out to Woolers at third. Two up, two down quickly in this fourth Our inning for Shelby Love. The five Missouri runs were all to Annabelle Weidra. Since Shelby Lowe has come into the game, she's allowed just one base hit, no runs. She struck out a couple batters. It's really slowed down this Mizzou offense. Which makes you think about that decision of why did Coach Mickey Dean start Weidras at the beginning? Shelby Lowe is coming in with such a different look. The Missouri hitters did so well off of Maddie Penta yesterday. Maybe try and give them a different look from that left side. A little bit slower, a little bit different movement with the ball. We must have seen something. Kaylee Langer lifts it into center field, and Packer is right on the warning track for a three up, three down inning. We go to the fifth and Como with Missouri. Hasn't given up a run in her four innings of work today. And Larissa Anderson last half inning was talking with Kylie down in front of the dugout and, and she said she's got that change up working. And that's the difference. When her change up is working like it is today, she's sometimes unhittable. These Auburn hitters have not found a way to adjust to that change up as well too. They look like they're stuck in between. If they want to swing at that hard stuff or want to swing at that changeup, they haven't really decided. And that's going to be very important for them going on this game forward is they need to decide what speed they want to swing at. Do they want to swing at the hard stuff or are they going to sit on that changeup? And once they make that decision, they're going to have to go for it. 1-0 is slapped foul from Rose Roach. And her fastball already doesn't blow you away, Brooke. It sits mid-60s. A lot of other people, especially in the SEC, will, will hit 70s, sometimes low 70s. So she, her fastball is already a lower velocity. And then when she takes as much speed as she does off the changeup, hitters are just way out in front all the time. Makes it look like it is 70 to mid-70s <laughs> yeah. because her changeup is so slow. But in reality, she only does pitch those lower 60s to mid-60s, but it's so effective because her changeup is so good. Looped up to short, and the gold glove shortstop, Jenna Laird, has the first out of the inning. Tomorrow it is a full day of softball on the SEC Network, a quadruple header starting at noon Eastern, and at the nightcap at 6 o'clock, it's number 10 Alabama hosting number 13 Florida in the second game of a three-game series at Rhodes Stadium. Coverage starts at 6 Eastern, 5 Central right here on the SEC Network. Aubrey Lizenby, the catcher, cuts right through it, 0-1. Harrison has not allowed a base runner since a one-out double back in the third inning. That ball is driven into center field. Alex Honnold camps underneath it, makes the snag. Two quick outs here in the fifth. Seen the sun cause some problems for a couple outfielders today, but not for Alex Honnold. She's got the glasses on, ready to make a play in center field. Yeah. 
Hitting for Penta is number 17, Haley Clemens. Mickey Dean makes a change in his batting order here. Chaley Clemens is the pinch hitter for Mariah Penta. True freshman from Alabama. Hasn't had a ton of swings this year, but when she has had at bats, she's made the most of them, hitting 353. <laughs> Coach Dean's probably just trying to change something up in his lineup right now. We haven't had a, t a ton of success so far off of Sierra Harrison. Maybe a freshman can come in, maybe give them a little bit of a spark that they need. This is typically when she sees most of her at-bats, is in a pinch hitting situation. Takes a strike there to make it one and one. Coach Dean told us earlier this week, she's finding herself as a true freshman like any other freshman would. She goes through ups and downs, but he's felt like she's given a lot more ups than downs this year and said because of that, we want to start getting her at bats in as many games as possible, even if it's just one in a pinch hit situation. And, and those are so important for younger players, right, to find any at bat. Even if it's just one in a game, you come off the bench cold in the fifth inning, what can you do in your one opportunity? And that in itself just gives you goosebumps as it is. You're a freshman, you're excited to play these new SEC games, and then you get an, you actually get in a bat against an SEC team. It's what every freshman dreams of coming into college, and she's taken advantage of it so far this year. Showing some great discipline right now, too. Watches that one just off the plate to make it 3-1. and one. Fouled straight back, it's a full count. Seven straight batters retired by Sierra Harrison, who struck out seven in four and two thirds innings today. Here's the full count pitch. Swing and a miss. Sierra Harrison again. Eight strikeouts on the. Not 100% sure what this stoppage in play is about, right before the start of the bottom of the fifth inning. Oh, it looked like Shelby Lowe didn't have her pitching wristband on. You'll probably need that. More SEC games coming up later tonight. Battle of top 25 teams in College Station, South Carolina and Texas A&M. Number three, LSU, and number 21, Kentucky, as LSU took the first of the three-game series from the Wildcats yesterday. Four top 25 matchups on the opening day of SEC play. This conference is just nuts sometimes. And we don't even have six to eight of the teams playing this weekend. That is an, an absurd number. Jenna Laird, the leadoff hitter for Missouri. She leads off at least once a game as the leadoff hitter sometimes two or three times. When she leads off an inning, Brooke, she's hitting almost 600. Which is another number that is unheard of. Jenna Laird has just matured at with her age and gotten so much better at getting the right pitches and making sure that she drives it to get on base. Well, that nearly 600 will go down a little bit here with a ground out to Peralta at short. The center fielder, number 25, Alex Hunter. Shelby Lowe really settled in in relief after the starting pitcher, Annabelle Weidra, gave up five runs in an inning and a third of work. Today, Shelby Lowe's numbers, three innings, just one hit, no runs, a pair of strikeouts. Hasn't gotten any help from her offense, but she's kept this game within somewhat striking distance. 
you got to ask yourself, what is Mickey Dean thinking for Game 3 starter tomorrow? Yes, you have your All-American, your National Pitcher of the Year in Maddie Penta coming back tomorrow, but Shelby Lowe so far has kept this offense down, and she has found ways to get out, even if they're not strikeouts, weak contact, flyouts, ground, out, ground outs, and she's done a really nice job so far today. What would you do? <laughs> well, obviously you have Maddie Penta, but I would start out with Shelby Lowe. Just, really? Just how well she's been pitching so far. But she gets in trouble in the first inning. Bring in your All-American, Maddie Penta. And that's nothing against Maddie Penta, but the Tigers had her number yesterday. Oh, yeah. Honnold rips it into right field, and what a catch! Isis Tresvik just robbed Alex Honnold of her third base hit of the day. She missed the one earlier because the Sun, she did not have any trouble with this one whatsoever. Great read right off the bat, comes straight forward, diving play, gets her glove right underneath it. What a play out there by Isis Tresbeck. Shoestring catch on the dive by Tresvik out in right field. Would have been a three hit day for Alex Honnold, but Instead, it's two quick outs to begin this fifth inning for Shelby Lowe in the circle. Those balls are not easy to catch, too. With all the momentum carrying it down into the ground, she did a great job making sure that she gets her glove right underneath it. Because, again, that thing was probably dying more than we know up here. Yeah. So, great play out there. It's in there for a strike to Julia Crenshaw. Evens the count at one and one. Three-run home run of Shantice Phillips has been the big swing today. Missouri got a couple more runs outside of that. Crenshaw skies it into center field. Packer over towards right field, and it's Trezvik who calls her off to make the catch. One, two, three inning as we go to the sixth here in Columbia with a five. CC, but it's really a luxury to have two Gatorade players of the year in the circle for you. Yeah, we talk a lot about this Mizzou offense, and rightfully so, but when every Friday and Saturday you can start somebody that was that highly touted of a recruit, and then they've both translated well to the college level as well. Lauren Krings every Friday, Sierra Harrison every Saturday. You get a lot in the circle. Absolutely, and shown there, Madison Walker, she has shown a lot of potential so far this year. She's trying to find her footing. What every freshman does, she's going to swing up balls out of the zone. She has tremendous power, and that's why she is so highly touted coming out of college is just her ability to make those big plays. She started almost every single game as a freshman so far this year. That's got to say something if you're starting a freshman over at first base. Yeah, Larissa Anderson said our belief in her has not gone down any just because a little bit of a slow start this year called her the first baseman of the future for the Tigers just a true freshman over there is the starting first baseman at day in and day out is Madison Walker <laughs> top of the order right now for Auburn KK McCrary at the plate stays off that one and it's three and one and she was the last Auburn Tiger to reach base against Sierra Harrison. A double in the third inning. Since then, eight straight batters retired by Sierra Harrison. Hasn't fallen behind many batters today, but it's three and one. And now a five pitch walk to start this inning. That could be big for Auburn. KK McCrary has done exactly what she's needed to do these last couple of games for the Auburn Tigers. She is that leadoff hitter. It is a very vital role that she makes sure she sees as many pitches as possible. She's been one of the only ones that has squared up Sierra Harrison so far today and then gets a walk as well, too. Has done a very good job so far for the Auburn Tigers today. We'll allow Harrison to have a break because in the last two outings, it's now 18 strikeouts, one walk. You'll take that ratio, I think. Absolutely. And when we were talking about that strikeout to walk ratio, you would think we would be talking about the Auburn Tigers, just about how they've been doing so far this year. But Sierra Harrison, in her own right, has pitched so many strikeouts compared to her walk. She has a very, very good ratio. It's not something we're used to seeing right there. Is a batter not swinging at all, especially when it's a walk. This is the spot of the order as Packer flares that one foul. That you want to try to get things going with Michaela Packer. 
There is a pinch runner. That's Abby Smith over at first base for Auburn. But Michaela Packer, team's best batting average on the season in the two hole, hitting 343. And she's right in front of three straight power bats with Peralta on deck, then Woolers and Leck coming up after her. Dips just low and in. One ball and one strike now to Michaela Packer. Packer lifts it, shallow right field. Second baseman Gallagher makes the play on the outfield grass for the first out. Maddie Gallagher making sure that she does not make the same mistake that she did, yet, did yesterday. A little blooper over first base, something that we thought that she should have gotten to. The umpire ultimately ended up ruling that it was a foul ball, even though after the replay it looked a little bit fair to us. But again, we're not we're not out there. But this time she does a really good job ranging over, calling off Madison Walker at first base. Yeah, the reason they're down there, and we are standing up here, but that one did look clearly fair yesterday. We also have the benefit of review yes. as well too, and replays and. It was one of those things that I can say someone's wrong all day long, <laughs> but I'm not down there making that, that game time call. If you want, I can stand over your shoulder and tell you you're wrong all day. If you want. <laughs> 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 Popped up here by Peralta. Left center field, Alex Honnold with the catch. Two quick outs after the leadoff walk. We've got a quadruple header on the SEC Network coming up tomorrow starting at noon with number three LSU and number 21 Kentucky, then another top 25 matchup in College Station where Texas A&M hosts South Carolina at 2 o'clock. At 4, Mississippi State and Ole Miss in Oxford and capping off the night with 10th-ranked Alabama hosting 13th-ranked Florida in Tuscaloosa. What a day of college softball that is in the SEC. Every single day is going to be a competition for every single one of these teams. That's how good this conference is. We talk about it day in, day out. You have to have your best stuff. And you can just see from that quadruple header that we're about to have tomorrow, it's going to be a good day of college softball. Millie Roberts is the pinch hitter here, sophomore from Owensboro, Kentucky, as she steps in there for Anna Woolers, the cleanup hitter. Hitting just 111 on the season, limited amount of at-bats, most of them coming in this capacity in a pinch hit situation. And she's down 0-2. Looks like right now Mickey Dean's just trying to switch things up, yeah. trying to get his offense going a little bit. Maybe the girls on the bench could provide more of an offensive spark than what his starters are right now. Trying to get something going for this Auburn Tigers against Sierra Harrison. Only two hits yesterday against Lauren Krings. The Auburn offense has only gotten three hits today, been shut out so far in the first five and two thirds innings by Sierra Harrison. Bouncer right back to Harrison. She can field the position too. Six innings of work for Harrison. She has shut out this. Exactly what he's doing right now, and especially in a big SEC game, giving Rolf that experience right now. It was a great finish to the day for Shelby Lowe. She retired 10 straight batters, three consecutive three up, three down innings. She didn't allow any runs, only one hit on the day. All five of those runs were by the starter, Annabelle Weidra. Makes you start to think maybe he is saving Shelby Lowe for tomorrow. Ripped over the head of the second baseman by Kara Daly, who has her first of the day to lead off the sixth. Kara Daly. She hasn't had a great day so far, 0 for 2, but she comes out and sticks with it. She gets that base hit over to over the second baseman's head. Great adjustment by Kara Daly throughout the day today. Gallagher. 
Had a home run yesterday. Makes it back-to-back -back days with a hit. This time a single to start the sixth. And Maddie Gallagher now steps in 0 for 2 on the day. Slow roller towards second. Roach over to first. Oh, pulled the first baseman's foot off the bag. Both runners safe. Just uncharacteristic errors today by the Auburn defense. Not something that we are used to. Again, that's going to go down as an error in the book. If the call stands, looks like we're going to be having a review from Mickey Dean here. But one of the things that we're not used to is they play such great defense behind their pitchers. They have not held up to that today. Three umpires all getting together to talk it over here after Mickey Dean came out of the dugout to argue his case. Take a look at it. Auburn is challenging the play at first base. The call on the field is safe due to a pulled foot. We are under review. All right, so we'll see. Was the foot pulled off the bag? I don't think so. I think her foot's well on there. You see a little bit of difference there. Oh, wow, and then Gallagher never even touched first base. But Lex's foot is definitely still on the bag. Starting this year, there was a rule put in place that you can have the quote-unquote safety bag where you don't have to actually touch first base. It can be just to the side of it. Both teams have to agree on that, though. I think all in all, Brooke, it's pretty clear foot is still on the bag. And even if it was off the bag, Maddie Gallagher did not touch first base. So regardless, she would have gone back to it and still would have gotten the out. I'm very confused on why Maddie Gallagher did not touch the bag in the first place. Usually that's something you got to think about when running through first base. But regardless, this play should be overturned. That was, I, I said that was Leck. That was actually Axe Milanowski who came in to replace Leck earlier in the game. But pretty certain she had her foot on the back. Obviously, the replay officials are seeing something that we're not seeing because this is taking a lot longer than I would expect it to. They have all the same looks that we have. I'm with you. It doesn't feel like this one should be taking as long as it has been. After review, the call is upheld. We have safe at first base. Yeah! Wow. Did not see that at all. Thought we had some pretty clear looks that foot was definitely on the bag. This is the third time that we have been wrong up here in the booth today. Well, Maybe our opinions changed a little bit. So right? my thing is, even if you say her foot was pulled off the bag, it looked like she brought the foot back to hit the first base bag before the runner even got there. So it was like twice that it felt like she had her foot on the bag. But I don't think there's a new rule or anything to where the runner doesn't have to touch first base. That is what's confusing me the most because 
it didn't seem, it seemed clearly that Matty Gallagher did not touch first base at all, which regardless of how Act Milanowski would have gone back onto the bag, it would have been an out. Yeah, that one is questionable without a doubt. I think to say the least. Not a call that I would expect Mickey Dean was very happy with. He was quick to say he wanted that one looked at. From the angles we all saw, it looked like the foot was well on the bag by Milanowski. So first two batters have each reached reach base for Missouri here in the bottom of the six, trying to add some insurance onto a 5-0 lead. And Mizzou can win the series today after winning game one. Something to take into account, too. Those two base runners are huge. That ball is skied into left field. Great catch on the run by McCrary. Runners have to get back, and they do. Chester peppered that ball, but just didn't quite have the distance to it. That is a huge out because having these two runners on base, if Katie Chester would have hit that ball out, it would have been a run rule victory for the Tigers. Yeah. They are three runs away. But again, we have number 20 out there, Abby Smith, who came in as a pinch runner, covered so much ground out there. She did a great job keeping her eye on the ball the whole time. It's very important that Auburn gets out of here, not scoring those three runs, or this game would be over. It's 10 runs after five innings, eight runs after six. So game winning run at the plate for Missouri with one out. First pitch is a little high. Stefania Abrascato, the freshman from New York, who was the Gatorade Player of the Year in the state of New York last year. The pinch hitter for her first at bat of the day. Throw back to second is not in time. Daly's back in there. Kind of lucky was very, very lucky there <laughs> going back. Thank God she's tall because she was <laughs> able to reach back to the bag. The, the throw had her, but Again, her arms are so long that she got back to the bag. Abrascato pops it back up to the pitcher. Rolf the catch. Daly's back in time. There's two outs. Let's see how close that was at second. Comes back. Super close. Daly was back in there. Home run already on the day for Shantice Phillips. That came back in the second inning and really opened this game up. And she skies one into left field here, but doesn't quite have the same distance. And McCrary with the catch. Final three outs for Auburn down five runs after this. Though for Auburn in this game, even though they haven't hit very well, has been show below. Yeah. When she came in for that relief appearance, only gave up one hit, no runs, had a really good job of keeping those batters off balance. That one hit was the second batter she faced, retired the next 10 she saw. All five runs for Missouri went to Annabelle Weidra, but Shelby Lowe limited this Mizzou offense. But Auburn didn't get any offense of their own through the first six innings, so we sit at 5 nothing. Max Milanowski, second at bat, came in as a pinch hitter. Back in the fourth inning. Check swing for Milanowski. One ball and two strikes. Here we go, 
Zoo got a complete game in the circle yesterday from Lauren Krings. Two hits, nine strikeouts, two runs. Jay Sierra Harrison, eight strikeouts, three hits, no runs. Zoo won in strike three, didn't get it. Check swing, popped up, shallow. Shortstop Laird can't make the play, knocked it down to keep it in front. But the infield single for Axe Milanowski has the leadoff runner on here in the seventh. That ball was hit in the Bermuda Triangle of the infield. Both of your middle infielders are playing back, hit right over the pitcher's head. Very hard play there for Jenna Laird. If she would have dove, maybe she would have gotten it. But at the same time, keeping the ball in front, making sure it doesn't get away from her. That was a very good job on her part. It was a gold glover two years ago as a sophomore at shortstop Jenna Laird. Ball got on the field and left field from the Mizzou bullpen. Quick stoppage of play and right back to it. Four hits today for Auburn. Two of them have been infield singles that Jenna Laird has made a play to knock it down, but then never had a play at first. Nice is Trezvic, first pitch swinging. Has one of the four hits today for Auburn. That came back in the second inning. Here comes the 0-1. Make it 0-2. It just seems like every time Sierra Harrison gets up in the count, she has the ability to throw any single pitch that she wants. She, all The batter has to look for that rise ball, that curve ball, and now think about the changeup as well, too. That's what makes her so successful. Popped up, left field. Shantese Phillips with the grab on the run for out number one. The last two days, I feel like we've been talking so much about the Missouri offense that we haven't number given enough credit to the pitchers. Rose, Rose. Lauren Krings pitched outstanding last night. Sierra Harrison doing the same thing tonight. It's been almost a pitching clinic so far these, these first two days for the Missouri Tigers. First pitch swinging, and Rose Roach smacks it into left field. Couple base hits here in the seventh for Auburn. Tomorrow night after the softball quadruple header, the SEC Now crew will break down the whole day, both softball and the SEC women's basketball tournament. You can watch it on the ESPN app as well. So Larissa Anderson out to have a quick word with Sierra Harrison, who's given up a pair of base hits here in the seventh inning after she gave up just three total through the first six innings. Eight strikeouts, no runs in six and a third innings today for Sierra Harrison, who's trying to make it back-to-back -back complete game wins for Missouri. Just on Wednesday, Brooke, she had a career-high 10 strikeouts, and she's real close to that again tonight. She is, and right now she doesn't have to think that she has to pitch it too cute right now. She still has a five-run lead. Even if they do hit a home run right now, it's still going to only be five to three. So she has this ability to keep pitching all of the pitches that she wants to. She doesn't have to leave anything too good over the plate, but she doesn't have to change anything that she has to do as well, tighten anything up. Instead, she can just go out there and still be the pitcher that she has been all day long. She's facing a new hitter. The pinch hitter is Talia Martin. First at bat this weekend for Martin. In on the hands of Martin, pops it up straight back. 0-2. Oh Only the sixth plate appearance of the year for Martin, who's one for five entering the day.
And one base hit came all the way back on opening day against Belmont. Since then, 0 for 4. Only one out, runners on first and second. Auburn trying to piece together a seventh inning rally yeah. and got her way out in front of it. Two down, nine strikeouts for Sierra Harrison. Doing what she's been doing all day long, comes back with this curveball in the outside corner. Really good job making sure that it jumps just over the bat. Julie Crenshaw couldn't quite hang on to it, but with a runner on first base, doesn't need to worry about the drop third strike coming into effect. So another strikeout for Sierra Harrison. Shaley Clemens watches one outside. Want to know the count for Harrison, who's one out away from back-to-back -back complete games. One and one. Missouri has a chance to become just the fifth team in the country to 20 wins today. Two others in the SEC, LSU and Texas A&M. Slashed foul, it's one and two. And a great play made in the stands by a fan too. One hand snag. If only we were playing the Savannah Bananas, that would have <laughs> yes. been counted as the last out. <laughs> Fans catch it, you're out. Game over. Will the 100th pitch of the day for Sierra Harrison be the final pitch of the day? Here's the one, two. Bouncing ball to Laird. Fires over the first ball game over, and Missouri has taken each of the first two games of the series from top 25 Auburn. You're coming off a career high 10 strikeouts to get Kansas City, and now you shut out Auburn. How confident were you feeling on that mound today? Um, extremely confident. Um, I mean, when we have a team like we do this year, where the bats are rolling and um, the defense that we have. It's, it's amazing, so it takes a, a lot of pressure off of me. So, How do you and the rest of the team plan to get the last win tomorrow? Um, same, keep, keep doing the same thing we're doing, like keep the bats rolling, keep shoving it on the mound and our defense up, so yeah. Okay, well, thank you. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you so and then now to Coach. Coach, you're now 22-2-0 and and in conference play. How rewarding is this? I mean, it's great. We're just taking it one game at a time. I mean, we're not looking at the record. We really don't care. We're just competing. Um, looking to forward to tomorrow, like we'll talk about this game inside the locker room, but really we're just going one game at a time. And then how do you feel about Sierra's performance tonight? I mean, she she threw a shutout. Great. I mean, she made some great pitches, some key strikeouts. Um, you know, having runners in the in the seventh inning, you obviously feel it a little bit, but I mean, she's really, really clutch. And what I really liked is the fact that she was able to go a complete game and we really saved our bullpen. Yes, well, congratulations. Thank you very much. M-I-Z. Back to you, Noah. Thanks, Kylie. Uh, Coach, talk about saving the bullpen. They've done that on back-to-back -back days. Complete game yesterday for Lauren Krings. Complete game today, Brooke, for Sierra Harrison. Nine strikeouts, no runs, and she was phenomenal today in the win. She had all of her pitches going. That rise ball was really jumping. Curveball to get some strikeouts. And we've talked about that changeup all day long. She was able to keep those batters off balance. That's what made her so successful and as well as the Missouri Tiger Bats having her back. Well, that'll do it for us here in Columbia. Game two goes to Missouri, and Mizzou has won each of the first two from Auburn. A big thank you to our producer, Jordan Alvis, our director, Sam Fry, and the rest of our phenomenal SEC Network crew. For Brooke Wilmus and Kylie Hansen, I'm Noah Reed saying so long from Columbia. Missouri shuts out Auburn in game two, five nothing. We've got game three tomorrow at noon central.